Hello, I'm Dennis Snow, and this is Speaking of Service Excellence. When I first meet with a client organization's leaders to discuss a planned customer service initiative, it's not uncommon for the group to be overwhelmed with the scope of work that's to be done. I often see the, the deer in the headlights look on their faces as the, the leaders wonder just what they've gotten themselves into. The problem is that most people, and, and including me, we tend to overcomplicate things by thinking that all of the elements of the initiative need to be done right now, and they don't. Like Stephen Covey says in his wonderful book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, we need to put first things first. And the first thing is to agree to keep things simple. If you overcomplicate a service initiative, or any initiative, which is very easy to do, you're setting yourself up and you're setting your organization up for burnout and for disappointment. So one of the ways to keep things simple and on track is to continually reflect on what the service initiative is all about. It's like taking a step back, taking a few deep breaths as you put everything into its proper perspective. So at the risk of oversimplifying things, I'd like to provide a perspective of customer service from a customer's point of view. And while this perspective might sound simple, I think that you'll find that it applies to pretty much any organization's customers when you get to the essence of what they want from you. So, as your customer, what do I want from you? Well, number one, I want you to know what you're doing. Number two, I want you to be efficient while you're doing it. And number three, I want you to be nice to me. So when you really look at it, that's it. Peeling away all of the stuff that confuses the issue, these are the things that I want as a customer. And so let's take a look at each one, again, from the, the customer's perspective. Number one, know what you're doing. I expect you to do the job right. And if for some reason you do the job wrong, I expect you to fix it with little or no inconvenience to me. I expect that you've had the proper training and that you can accurately answer my questions or find someone who can. And I expect you to do what you said you were going to do. Number two, be efficient. My time is valuable. I shouldn't have to put up with processes that are designed for your convenience at the expense of mine. So please understand that it's inconvenient for me to be on hold for 20 minutes as I listen to a recorded voice that says how important my call is. Leaving me sitting in a waiting room 30 minutes past my appointment time, it just isn't right. And waiting for a, a home delivery that might occur sometime between noon and 5 p.m. takes me away from my job. On the other hand, when I can tell that you're concerned with my convenience, you move a few notches up on the customer loyalty scale. And number three, be nice to me. I'm already giving you my hard-earned money, or I have already given it to you. Please act like you appreciate it. It just takes a smile or a sincere tone of voice to show that you care. I feel much better when I deal with an employee who clearly enjoys his or her job and seems happy that I'm there. Now, I know that this view of customer service is stripped down to its essence, and it's meant to be. I'd ask you to look at your operation through the lens of these three elements. And I think that you'll find that the, the service behaviors you're looking for, or that you're trying to achieve, fit nicely into the stripped down view. Whether you're at the beginning of a service improvement initiative when everything appears kind of daunting, or you're in the middle of an initiative that's gotten confusing or bogged down, it helps to be reminded of what you're trying to accomplish and to weed out all of the things that take you off target. Getting back to the essence of excellent service is re-energizing, and it makes it all seem doable, and it dramatically increases the likelihood of success. Well, I hope you found the ideas in this video to be helpful. If you'd like more information about how Snow & Associates can assist your organization, or you'd like to learn about my new virtual training program, Dennis Snow Virtual Training, please visit my website, www.snowassociates.com. Thanks so much for watching.